Hello there, this week saw the launch of the final Dragonflight patch Dark Heart. The major feature of the patch, Remix Mists of Pandaria, doesn't go live until next week, more on that later, but for storyline fans there was still plenty to get our teeth into. Do be aware that I will be discussing some of the storyline of the new patch in this video, so you have been warned. To celebrate the launch, Blizzard released a free short story called A Whisper of Warning. This focuses on one of the main characters of the Dark Heart Patch storyline, Illyria Windrunner, and a meeting with her son, which takes place just before the events of the new patch. This short story also acts as a sampler for a new World of Warcraft book called Whispers Within that releases later this year. I found the story to be quite an enjoyable moment. The setting of the story in Silvermoon has sparked some conversation within the community, mainly because of Alliance characters being allowed to visit. But for me, the most interesting detail is the mention of rebuilding efforts going on in the half of the city that was destroyed by the Scourge. I suspect that this may be a subtle setup for the second expansion of the World Soul trilogy, which it was announced in BlizzCon 2023 would be set up and around the Silvermoon area. I'm going to put links to the short story and the new book in the comments down below. For the patch popper and the main event is the Dark Heart storyline, which is a prologue for the War Within expansion. I found the quest line to be quite enjoyable, it's done a really good job of setting up some of the themes for the War Within, and it establishes Salatath as the main threat that we'll be facing. This quest line is rewarding a nice little collection of void themed transmogs, including a void colour scheme for a Slither Drake dragon riding mount. The quest line also includes a blink and you'll miss it reveal of Caligossi's replacement on the Kirin Tor Council of Six, Archmage Drendon. Who? Well that was my reaction too. I had to look this one up, but Drendon is a former member of the council dating back to the Warcraft 3 era, albeit he was only ever mentioned in some of the books. He was mispresumed dead after the destruction of Dalaran by the Scourge. Now I don't know about you, but a missing mage reappearing so conveniently feels a little bit odd. Almost like there's a story being set up there, just saying. One hidden gem in the patch is a new Night Elf storyline called Sins of the Sister. This quest line is hidden away in Belameth, the above ground version of Amir Drushal. I suspect quite a few players will have missed this, so I'm going to put a picture up on screen now to show you where you can go and pick the quest up. We also got the final two heritage armour sets of this expansion, this time for Draenei and Troll. Both quest lines are very good, but for me the star of the show is the Draenei quest line. Back in 1007, the Orc Heritage questline was rightly acclaimed for its quality and how well it captured Orc culture. That quest set an almost impossibly high goal for other Heritage questlines to reach, but in my opinion, the Drani questline has not only reached that bar, it's managed to surpass it. I'm not going to spoil the story as I know many people do the quest later on, but the quest line manages to meaningfully update the current state of the Draenei and also sets up a few tantalising hints for the future, including the possibility of a rebuilt Shatrath on Azeroth. Unfortunately, this patch also brought with it, as has become the norm for Dragonflight patches, a bunch of bugs. This time players have encountered issues accessing guild banks, missing crest drops and for the North American players who got it first, a broken pre-made group finder. These bugs followed on from the issues in the first two weeks of season 4, and while bugs like this are not uncommon in World of Warcraft, the number of impactful bugs does seem to me to be higher than were useful, and it's fair to say it's been generating some discussion and discontent in the community. Hopefully this is something that is on the team's radar, because while bugs are inevitable in a game of the size and complexity as World of Warcraft, there are limits to players' tolerance for them, especially over the long term, and I do think that the team does need to be looking to reduce the frequency of major bugs in their patch releases. As a longer term player, I've invested enough in the game to let issues like this pass, but for new players who don't have that investment, this is the kind of thing that can be a major turnoff. Discussion of bugs are also likely to be seen by players considering a return to World of Warcraft, and this runs the risk of deterring them from giving even Dragonflight or even the War Within a try. MMOs are dependent on the health of their player bases, and things like this that put off new and returning players are not good 
for the long-term health of the game. This week, the weekly bonus quest is to do four Mythic or Mythic Plus dungeons. Instead of rewarding the usual heroic raid loot piece, this time the quest rewards two antique bronze bullion. This is an addition to the normal weekly drop from the raid and means you can get three bullion this week. And that will enable us to buy an extra Awakened Track gear piece along with last week and next week's pieces. With Awakened gear being upgradable to the max possible item level for Season 4, this makes this quest far more interesting for players. And if you do do dungeon content, getting your 4 Mem0 or M plus in this week will likely be a must do. Next week on Thursday the 16th, we will see the release of the very anticipated Remix Mists of Pandaria event. This event will allow you to level alts from 10 to 70 entirely in a slightly tweaked version of Pandaria with an all new gearing and reward system. As well as a faster way to level up characters for the War Within, there's a bunch of cool rewards including 32 mounts to collect. I've done a full preview video of the event which should be linked on screen now for you to catch up in all the details. I also plan to do a full review of patch 1027 including Remix in a few weeks time once I've had time to experience it in full and see how it plays out. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video goes live. I've tons of cool new content planned for the near future. One thing to be aware of is that characters leveled up within Remix won't be able to leave Pandaria until the event ends, at which time they will be converted to normal characters and given a set of template gear. The end of day of the event has now been revealed via the in-game calendar to be August the 20th. Now this date is very interesting for me. I am of the opinion that it's very unlikely Remix would continue into the War Within pre-patch, so this likely sets a not before date for the War Within. Now, WoW pre-patches usually last two to four weeks. There have been exceptions, but especially in recent times, this is very much the norm, and if the pre-patch did land in mid to late August, we'd be looking at a mid-September release for the War Within, which does fit with their BlizzCon fall timeline and the roadmap suggestion that it could be on the summer fall boundary. This is of course complete speculation. There's nothing stopping Blizzard from extending Remix if things slip. But what do you think about the idea of a September release for The War Within? Let me know in the comments down below. On the subject of reminders for upcoming content, the Northrend Cup Dragon Riding Race series ends this coming Monday. So if you've not got round to it, time is running out for you to get the new transmog set. I had a great time revisiting Northrend, and this series of races is a cool mix of longer runs and a couple of shorter and more challenging sprints. The one in Burian Tundra has some very tricky twists and turns. Overall though, the timers for these races are fairly lenient, so they should be on the easier end of the scale to complete. Over in Season of Discovery and players in certain servers got a little bit of sad news with the effective closure of the Lava Lash and Chaos Bolt servers in the EU and Lava Lash in the US. These servers have been closed to new accounts and players are being offered free transfers to other realms. Lava Lash is an RP server which tends to have more cost-net communities and so this has generated some pushback from affected players. Obviously, Realm Health is very important in Classic where Realm Choice is a lot more important than in the modern game and I do hope that affected players do find a good new home. Season of Discovery also got a welcome extension to the Discoverer's Delight XP buff which now offers a 150% XP bonus up to level 39 and a 100% bonus for levels 40 to 49. This is likely Blizzard preparing the ground for the next phase of Season of Discovery but it also does mean that if you've been taking a rest from Season of Discovery now is surely a good time to be able to get caught up. Over in Cataclysm Classic and Blizzard have announced a free welcome back weekend for May the 9th to 13th where all players with inactive World of Warcraft accounts will be able to log in to Cataclysm Classic with no subscription fee. Also in Cataclysm, lovers of archaeology can breathe a sigh of relief as the bugs that prevented the profession from working properly have now been resolved. Now it's time for the terribly named PTR Watch, which is where I cover all the new developments from the PTRs, Alphas and Betas. 
While I try to avoid story spoilers, I will be covering new discoveries for the War Within here, so do feel free to skip if you want to avoid information about the new expansion. Testers on the Alpha have been able to dive a little into the engineering profession which seems to be getting some really interesting developments. The traditional engineering battle res, at least for now in the Alpha, does not require engineering to use, which could make it quite attractive as a commodity item for engineers to sell in the auction house. Engineering is often lacking bulk items to sell to other players, so I do hope that this does remain the case on launch. Engineers are also getting a new wipe recovery mass res device, which I suspect will be pretty popular in raid. There's also a cool new item that allows you to pause the timer of your flask and food buffs when you're out of combat. This is also usable by non-engineers at the moment, and I suspect this could be quite a big seller on the auction house. The star of the engineering show though is a brand new mount to craft, the Crowd Pummeler 230, and fellow content creator Mr. GM has helpfully shared some visuals of it. Link to his tweet, which also includes a short video, will be down below. If you're a fan of tailoring bags, then the next expansion is bringing a bunch of new bags, including the return of profession-specific bags. Profession bags were the predecessors to the reagent bag, typically being bigger than general purpose bags but limited to specific profession items. Unfortunately, the bags are not finished on the alpha so we don't currently know what their sizes will be. Much more interesting though is a new bag which comes with a 3% speed buff. This bag is unique equipped and is war bound rather than soul bound, which suggests that we may be able to send it back and forth between our alt characters. This is a very interesting departure for the game and it's going to be interesting to see if they do more things with effects and bags in the future. With the introduction of dragon riding and being able to fly right from the start of a new expansion, I suspect that flight masters are seeing a lot less business than was the case in the past. And in the war within, it looks like Blizzard planned to try to give them a little bit of a hand with a 25% flight speed boost. This will be a reward for unlocking all of the flight points in the new expansion. Now personally, while I don't use flight points very much, I do occasionally jump on a flight master when I want to AFK a bit and being able to get to my destination a little bit faster will be very welcome. This week's alpha build opens up the final leveling zone Ash Kahit, which is one of the most anticipated of the new zones. Last week's zone, Hallowfall, is one of the more visually attractive and interesting zones we've seen in World of Warcraft, and this new zone is going to have to do some very heavy lifting to surpass that. We also this week see the reveal of the new battleground, Deep Hall Ravine, so if you're a PvP player and have alpha access, be sure to go and check it out and give it a bit of a test. I'm sure Blizzard will be looking for your feedback. Blizzard have also announced that about 2,000 achievements have been changed from character specific to account wide on the alpha. The team did warn that on alpha this will cause incomplete achievements to lose progress, but they do say that this will not be the case when it goes live. When it goes live, most achievements will have their progress in multiple characters combined, but there will be a small number of achievements where that doesn't make sense, in which case the character with the most progress will be used instead. The new build also revealed a bunch of customizations for the new Earth and Allied race. The most interesting thing about this though is the ability to apply different customizations to each shoulder, arm and leg. Seeing more fine grain character customizations is super cool and hopefully this is going to be a feature that we will see extended to other races in the future. Well, that's all for this week. If you found this video even a little bit interesting or useful, please let me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like button. And if you forgot to subscribe earlier, now is a great time to hit the button. Subscribing is by far the best way to support channels like mine. That's all for now and I will be back with more content real soon.